So first you've got to open up Rhino like this. Uh, it'll give you a prompt of choosing between different templates. These templates set your units, which can be changed later. Um, you can select large objects or small objects. And the difference between those two is that there will be more uh, intermediary lines in small objects, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So we're going to start with small objects millimeters, which is the default. So we'll double click and it will open up. This is our basic Rhino UI. Each one of these is a different viewpoint uh, and you can make them full screen by clicking on this right here and you can change your top, front, right perspective and you can go back to the four squares by clicking on that icon. You can use your right click to uh, change your viewpoint and rotate around the center of your object. You can also click, if you hold down control and click and drag, left click and drag, you can pan and your scroll wheel will zoom you in and out. You have a lot of different quick menu uh, commands here. Um, the Windows version does look a little bit different, so you'll need some time to get used to that. And you also have your text box. Uh, your command text box can be activated by just simply starting to type in a command and hitting enter. You can cancel a command by hitting escape. And you can do the same commands that you just did by hitting enter or return again. Um, you also have you can click into here if you want, but it's a lot faster just to start typing. Uh, you have these options here. Grid snap will snap each, as you can see, will snap your placements onto somewhere in this grid. Remember how I was talking about templates earlier? Uh, the template means that the template I selected, large, small objects, millimeters, means that each one of these grid lines is one millimeter. So then each one of these is 10 millimeters. If this were the small object template, each big jump here would be one millimeter and each one of these would be a tenth of a millimeter. You can adjust all of these by using the grid command and you can adjust your spacing. You can make custom spacing. You can say how far out you want your grid lines to go, your major line interval, so each one of these is 10, or you could make it each one be 20. And see, that changes it. But I just want 10. We'll do done. And you can also set custom grids for each viewpoint, which is really helpful. Uh, you just want to get your space set up the way you want. It's pretty nice. Um, so next, you have your gumball, which you'll have to create a object to see. So I'm just going to make a simple line here. So now we select our line. You see this cool thing of arrows that pops up? That is the gumball. If you don't see it, your gumball may not be toggled. So if you click and drag on these arrows, it will move it only in that dimension. Um, as you notice, there's different colored arrows for different viewpoints. For example, your blue is will go straight up, so it's your y-axis, and your red is your x-axis, and then green is your z-axis. Pretty cool. Um, you'll also notice these arcs. These arcs are an easy way to rotate your object on whatever plane that you want. Additionally, you have these boxes at the end of the lines. You can use these to stretch your objects. They will stretch from the origin point, which is in the middle here. And you can also adjust it by uh, relocating it um, and things like that, changing your drag strength settings things like that. Additionally, you can just drag your object any way you want. You can also hold shift to keep it down in a planner direction. Additionally, you can select ortho, which means it will only, when ortho is selected, it will only move along orthogonals. I couldn't drag this diagonally if I tried. So if you want that, turn that on. And Planner will make sure that you're only ever drawing in one plane. 